record button. And now I'm going to hit the stream button. Wait, in the bottom left? Yeah, it does that to indicate. Yeah, it does. And now we're streaming. And now everyone knows on Twitch that in the bottom left, it does that to indicate that we're live here on Twitch now for our Pathfinder playtest gestalt game. Tiki and Jason and uh, too many names at once and Ross and Josh, those kind of rhyme. And that's why I tripped. Thank you guys so you much for Levi. support on Patreon. And Levi, thank you for hanging out and... and being you, I never know what to say to the non-patrons in games. I always trip all over it because I'm a social butterfly. Anywho, I'm not going to do a whole lot of rambling. We're here for that playtest gestalt game that I'm not running. So I'm going to sit down and shut up and get out of my redneck voice and into my kelp voice. To be fair, you're still more of a social butterfly than you were in your first few videos. Oh my god, watching back through older Forgotten Races reviews, oh, I can hear the changes in your style so yeah, much. It's it was. It's been, it's been like a year in change now since uh, since BDG yeah, began. I, de I, definitely, I definitely watch through them from time to time. It, it's nice to see that transition, man. You really come to your own. You know, I feel the same way about yeah. Tarask, and I'm not gonna lie. Like, I've been editing our Halloween one-shot, and, like, I remember when you were afraid of everything as a player, and now, like, you guys took down a CR-12 Undead with two level four dudes. Which is a story for you all to watch when that inevitably gets uploaded to YouTube. Tomorrow. Uh, but you but can you can, like, you're a lot more comfortable as your character, and, like, it's kind of heartwarming that that happened. Anyway, I'm starting to learn the rules. I'm you are. to learn the rules in the character. You did it. But, uh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to Tales from the Greenwich Colony, where last we left off, I mostly went on an exposition dump as we had to deal with technical difficulties and a couple of our players being gone because... life. Because they don't love us anymore the week ago. Fair. It well, was beer! <laughs> I had to go get beer! Okay, fair. Well, those fair. problems have solved because my service provider, I, they got hollered at and yelled at and they got their yeah. stuff together. Yeah, Stick it to the man! At, yeah, you gotta yell at those people. Are you sure it wasn't beer related? <laughs> too much beer on the surface! Just whoop! I, I, know I like how we have a dwarf that's too much beer, that's too alcohol dependent, and we have a dwarf that doesn't really do much with alcohol to begin with. It balanced itself out. Character trust. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure he's a dwarf. He's a little less beer. Hey, short has got the beer. You're fine words. It's close enough. Yes, it's shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> the laughter is restrained. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yes, where we last left off, Bryn, Mirden, and, well, PK started to go off the boat, but then technical difficulties, so he stayed on the boat for a moment or two yelling at some um, sail, sail guy on the uh, next ship over who was making fun of his chest hair or something like that. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like and, something I would do. Yeah, uh, while the other two were kind of just getting woken up, uh, uh, Elu was probably saying his prayers and doing his morning sort of rituals to Saren, to, not Saren, right? You don't worship Saren, right? Uh, uh, Shalin. Shalin. I'm still learning the Pantheon. It was Saren Ray at first. It people. was Saren Ray at first. Yeah. You guys defense. Well, it, his it, it was Saren Ray at first. PK is Look, currently I, an atheist, so... Um... Fair. You know, perhaps somebody, somebody in the party or someone in a town might be able to I almost thought you would have been a green faith guy. They're like, the I just thought might been find religion. He is well and truly yeah, the actual Gorilla King. Literally. Oh, God. Oh, we're going to have to deal with that later on. Okay. Good. I'll have to bring that up. Good. That's a later plot line. Good. But yes, um, getting off track, done for a little <laughs> bit now. Yeah. Um, you all have arrived safely in the town of, or the city of Noctine, specifically the protectorate of Noctine. And you'll find out about the whole political establishment that's around here as you care to later. Right now, you just know this place to be called Noctine. You know it is kind of the relative military seat of power for the area. It's one of the major ports. It's pretty like a central hub for a lot of the colonies in the surrounding area. After pulling in on the Emerald Cutter, after fighting off several elementals from a large sort of storm surge that came down from the crown of the world, you guys have finally made it and are dealing currently with a bureaucrat who's making fun of you at every opportunity he could get. Last I checked, you made a joke about druids turning into fishes and whatnot. You never know who you're eating! Exactly. 
for time's sake, we're going to assume that eventually the rest of the group got kind of shooed off the boat as they were getting ready to move the merchandise and whatnot off because it is still mostly a trade vessel. And they all kind of just reconvene outside the ports. Um, for the most part, the day is fine. It is a good, sunny day. Um, it's a bit cold. Once again, Greenwich Isle is significantly high up in the northern hemisphere of Galarion. So it is pretty chilly, even though it's supposed to be um, actually around like summertime. I was kind of expecting this to be so more so like month six when the campaign started in, my, in the time frame. So it's like proper into the summer, but it's still pretty, pretty chilly. Like you guys, if you would have to guess 70 degrees to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, sorry, Europeans, I don't, I'm not good at, um, I used to be good at doing that. Can see us off the top of my head? I'm not at the moment. Kane used to give me so much trouble for that back in the day, him being yeah. Canadian. Well, <laughs> yeah. And, um, but it's a very nice day. The sounds of pelicans fly overhead. People seem, can be seen walking about. There's kind of that distant sort of muffle of noise of people talking and whatnot. Carts moving by. Um, you guys see occasional wagon, a uh, couple of carts. This, this does seem to be an area that's more devoted to, you know, the whatever fishermen and naval sort of people live here, work here, um, kind of go by. You can smell fish. You see some small children running around, playing around with... Um, Bits of seaweed, it's calm. Well, now that he's got his wits back about him. Big man, you, you were saying something about a about a, a chicken? A giant chicken. You've come here to, to punch a chicken. I don't understand yes, what you mean. Yes, I absolutely, I absolutely have came here to punch a giant chicken. Can you explain Can more? I, I, I don't understand. I Chickens are only... Uh, this big. Okay, this kicker is like this may be something that the other players can roll on, but he is specifically not saying the details on purpose. Voices in my head. It's at about twenty-four Celsius. Oh, ah, thank you. Yeah. yeah thank you, Drunken not, Bowser. He's not telling the details on purpose, but that might be something that a, you know. And then a member of the party could sense vote it. All right, sure. I'll throw a perception check over your... I think that's perception, and I'm going to say with the charisma modifier. Okay. Bam. Just so do a sense it. motive-esque sort of thing. My perception... So it would target his deception DC. And my perception uh, is... Uh, what do I add on perception? I add five. So that means okay. in total I've thrown a... 14 at the board over his uh, 12 plus ranks in deception if applicable plus charisma. Do you have any ranks in deception? Um, no, I'm, I'm a negative. And four. what's your charisma? Yeah, I'm, it's negative two. For the, your charisma is negative two? No, my charisma is two, but I have a negative four proficiency because I'm not trained. You, uh, have a negative one, you have a negative three. Because, because it goes up two. from level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you are two. You're level two plus the fact you have two charisma minus four because you were untrained in it would equal just a flat ten. So oh, Mutant gets a hunch that this guy knows a little more. Yeah. All right. You kind of see that at it. He's big. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. But even then, you can tell that he's smart enough, or at the very least, wise enough, to retain information that he doesn't want to share. All right, fair enough. All right, big guy. I know I wasn't the most honest myself when I came aboard the Emerald Cutter, but if you want our help, we need to know what it is we're dealing with. I don't think it's actually a chicken. Is there perhaps a name, a description? There is There is a name, there is a description. Um, however, if I tell people about the big... Thing that I'm going to fight, it may cause other people to want to fight it and beat me to the punch, so to speak. Well, like I was saying last time, lad, the three of you pointing at Elu and Bowser and uh, PK in a line, you don't form the most normal shield walls, but you're good fighting men. And your problems are my problems. You saved my life back then. And, and if Bren, we, Bren and I have talked already. Bren is good. He is upstanding. We have shaken hands because he was here last time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It already happened. Yeah, 
And I've decided not to kill him. And he's decided not to kill me for now. However, big man, if you tell us, we can help you. Okay. I promise to tell you, but I cannot stress this enough. This information does not leave the, the group. Anyone you have a problem a with that? Like, you say that as a kid just like kicks a ball into the center of the group and just like they just run through you guys. Maybe we should find a quieter place to talk. I'm pretty sure Bowser can find us a inn by smell. Bowser, how good is your ale sense abilities? Or he's probably muted for now. His ale um, sense. Bowser. <laughs> yeah, Bowser just has ale sense by default. Ale what? sense 60. Your ale sense. They're looking for a tavern. I oh, it's that way! He, yeah, he, he just like randomly. <laughs> oh, the by the way. And you're all just like, okay, he, ran, he totally picked a random protect random sort of direction but he walks just a few feet and then you guys see a what looks to be like in, launched in between two houses almost kind of like shantily built looks like a like a little um hole in the wall sort of place with a crab like a wooden crab nailed to the top of it it's in here i can smell it it's good enough for me um, okay as you guys open the door, you do find it leading downwards. It seems to go down into a sort of hole in the ground, literally. Do you all continue down? Like, it looks like it's literally just dug out of the earth. I have no reason not to. I'm good. Yeah, I'll follow. Yeah, why not? I'll take point. Uh, okay, you only need to walk down about ten stairs before you look around and see that it seems to be... It's kind of like they dug out a basement underneath the two houses, joined them together, and then built an outside entrance. It's basically the space underneath the two houses has been kind of turned into this sort of... It looks kind of like a mine to uh, Bowser. It reminds him of a mine. It's actually quite similar to um, uh, the sort of bars that um, uh, entrepreneurial sort of dwarves would set up in his hometown or home colony in like the sides of the mountains and near major like mining sections. It's just basically like they dug out a bit of earth, smoothed everything out, brought down some furniture, made a bar, got beers of ale, got ke kegs of ale. Whole beers and... of ale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got kegs of you ale. You know, for, for a supposed dwarf that's dry, you should took a, a exceptional speed of getting in front of me. It's a gift. I'll go sit down in the corner. Oh, uh, yeah. The <laughs> Next the time you get between me and me drink, boy. Is there a, is there a circular table? like? Oh, yeah. It looks like all the tables and whatnot. All together? Like, the tables seem to be, like, oversized, sort of, like, barrels and crates that they've turned into tables with, like, cloth, like, you know, sort of, like, sheets thrown across for table spreads. And the benches seem to be uh, just stumps that they've once again smoothed out. At this point, you're all it, the level of smoothness is like okay. Are they actually like just some place that got mushed together, or is this a place they made look like this for some sort of tourist trap sort of thing? And not that I'm mistrustful, but I'll find a place more towards a corner with my back to the corner, so it's you know I have good tactical view of the bar. <laughs> Yeah, it's not difficult. There's no parties your guys' size, and it just yeah. seems like there's just a few couple of uh, regu regulars, and um, the, uh, maybe somebody who has a lunch break who seems to be eating some, you see like a couple of people who might be on the lunch break just eating some soup and kind of quietly talking to one another. Um, most of the patrons are humans. You do see some dwarf. You do see like a couple of dwarves in the couple I mentioned that were eating soup seemingly on the lunch break seem to be two dwarven dudes. And behind the bar, you see a dwarf talking to what looks to be a half-elf woman who grabs a platter with um, ales lined on it and begins to take it to another table nearby. She must be the waitress or the or the barmaid. Well, now the tea, now the Bowser's found his natural habitat, Mirden's going to go sit in the corner and let events play out as they do. Well, now's as good a time as any, lad. I don't think anyone's listening in. Does it look like anybody's, like, eyeing us, I guess, as we walk in? Uh, the barkeep is, but it's more so like a, hmm, new people, less. Hmm. And as I, as I sit down at the table, I'm going to pull out my platinum piece 
that I got from the merchant and put it at the center of the table and, and say, if we're all, all in this together, what's mine is yours, information and money, you know, so we can be prepared for what lies ahead. Okay. Platinum piece is uh, pretty big. Ten, worth 10 gold coins. So. It's quite a bit of money, hey? All right. What in the hells are we fighting? What are we? What chicken monster have you been sent to kill, lad? The name he told me is Jabberwocky. Do I need to roll the note that is? Here's an issue. You check. don't. Everyone else does. You don't. The okay. Jabberwocky is one of those sort of creatures that's integral to your island. The only tribe to rival, you know, the kings of the of your island. I I can't say the names right off the top of my head because sure. I need to look at them. Basically, <laughs> the only tribe that stood a chance against your tribe was rumored to have once tamed a Jabberwocky. They were rumored to be that great of huntsmen so that they even managed to take down Jabberwocky. And so a Jabberwocky is known to your mythos and even the thought of it being actually on this island shins a shunder down your spine. Everybody else does need to make me a nature roll. Brain. Yeah, that's right. Us Americans uh, haven't uh, pissed off enough people yet with the, f with the bad accents. <laughs> <laughs> Brain and with an my... 11... Uh, you mine hurt. actually is three higher. Ah, that's unmodified. With a fourteen, you've heard rumors of the Jabberwocky. From what you would know, they are beasts that can rival even ancient dragons in strength. Hmm. Uh, that might be a bit ambitious for us right now. Lad, do you know what it is that you've been sent to fight exactly? He, the person that hired me, um, he described it to me, um, but I didn't really understand it. Okay, let me let me bring you up to speed then. This creature is one of the Tain, one of the first things ever created in the material plane's first draft of existence, the first world. It's an engine of destruction. He wants you to kill it. Well, I don't think I can kill it right now, once, but it's something to work towards. Like That's get, just... stronger, get stronger and eventually take it down. <laughs> uh, the the, mer the uh, merchant didn't give me a you know, say you have to do it in a week or so. So well, good, because we'd all be very, as, very dead if we had a week. So I'm, so I'm, uh, so I'm sure that, yeah. And he seemed like he's a very patient person. So I'm sure that, <laughs> that uh, I'm sure that you know we can. I, I, we, we together can beat up a few weaker things. And eventually be strong enough to take down, you know, the giant thing. The I laughing voice in my head who doesn't want to <laughs> shut up when other people are talking seems to think otherwise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. DM. DM things. You know, it's just like evil DM moment. <laughs> the DM's gone and the, turned to the dark I, side. I'd look over to Mirda. Oh, you hear the voices too. That's why I drink so much, to drown them out. You know, most people will seek help when these things happen instead of frying the... Do you... Looking over it, Bren. Do your kind... Do you have more organs? Do you have more livers? Or are you just trying to die at 30? I'm 30. Oh! Oh, forgive me. Oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> Pretend I didn't say that. Oi! <laughs> the voice kind of comes across. As you guys turn to see the... As a, technically, in. my age is 30 also. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I think mostly age. like me, a human, you're a little hairier, a little smellier. I, I think you're, you're oh, human. I... Uh, yeah, the fellow looks human, says a voice, as you guys kind of turn over to see the drawer from behind the bar. Uh, sorry to bother you yip yapping about chickens and destruction i don't know what the... he just shakes his head but uh old but uh it's kind of a common courtesy for you to when you go into a bar to at least get some drinks before you just start yip yapping away and the oh, whole man, party turns to face bowser 
<laughs> What'd you say, Bouncer? It's like we was waiting on service. There's too many of us to take up all of your bar. Last I checked, you didn't call for her. And she's got other patrons to deal with at the moment. Don't normally get a group your size until later in the evenings. Well, I'll have whatever the strongest stout you have is. Very well. You want? I, ne I nearly got killed by a fart in a puddle out on the boat. He just raises an eyebrow but doesn't say anything. I swear they were jumped up out of the ocean, tried to get me. It, if mm. he looks in my direction, I'll just shrug. Yeah, he does. So he's just like, oh. Okay, so stop for this fellow here. Uh, what about you all? Uh, you. He says, kind of like pointing to Bryn. What are you having? Uh, Go on, you know you want a nail. Um, not today. Uh, What's a dwarf I'll... that don't drink ale like water? Are you, is something the matter with you, bud? Friend. I think he might have lost some of his livers. He's 30. Don't mind him. He doesn't know how other races age. Oh, she he's a racist, is he? Oi! <laughs> no, I think he grew up on an island with nothing but humans. Accurate, accurate. <laughs> I, I'd like to ask the bartender if he has anything to eat. I'm not particularly yeah. hungry or thirsty, but I'm, I am very hungry. I thought you just said you ain't. Yeah, yeah, I'll go to Kettle Stew and back. I also got some fresh loaves of bread from the baker. Just came in just a few minutes ago, actually. Can give you guys one of those, uh, some jam, perhaps, to eat along with it? That's oh, what yeah, that would be good. It'd, it'd, help me, it'd help me keep down more ale, yes. Sure. Do you, um, do you have change for a platinum? Once again, both eyes kind of raise at this point as he just kind of like looks to the table, sees a platinum coin. Ah, uh, I, I, I think I do. Well, uh, I'll take some of that stew and bread, good sir. I'll, I'll just gonna assume you all are gonna get around ale. He says, just like grabbing the platinum coin. I'll be back in a bit. And uh, he goes over, kind of, you know, kind of whistles to the barmaid. She walks over, and uh, he says something to her. She looks to the group. You all not. Uh, you guys eventually get your food and drink. Uh, and Bowser, that only took you uh, two silver to buy, so you get nine gold and eight silver back. Uh, you mean... PK. Thank you. PK. Hmm? PK, that sorry. My, my bad. Coin. My bad. So, <laughs> sorry, PK. Yeah, you get nine gold and eight silver back. You literally basically used a hundred dollar bill to buy uh, some off the McDonald's. I, I like the, I like, it feels I like, good. It, it feels <laughs> good you saying silverback. That that's a nice pun. Oh yeah, that was good too. So many good things. Not true. So as we're waiting for our food, but yeah, I've, I've talked to. I know why PK is here. I, mean, I understand that balance must be brought back to balance for Bren. He lose quiet right now. So I just turning to Bowser and what brings you to the aisles? Well. As much as I like to pretend I'm nothing but a drunk, I am also a brewer. And uh, I had uh, happened to chance to sample the best brew I had ever had. And it says it comes from this island. So if I ever wish to perfect my art, I have to come here and find who made it and try to learn from him. I see. Plus, so. uh, all the boys back home kind of, uh, yeah, well, they took over my specialness of being, you know, the only monk dwarf, so. And so, something else to be special for. So, I'm going to make the best brew there is and bring that home and see if they can top that. Because if they can, I want to taste it. I see. So, we have set right the balance in nature. We have kill one of the oldest, most powerful creatures in existence, and we have get better at hey, ale hey, now making. That's, now that's not all I'm about. I'm also trying to uh, 
I also want to do great deeds so that I can prove to my parents that I'm not just, you know, just a wild barbarian, you know, that my, you know, that's like their parents. Friend, if you manage to kill the Jabberwocky, people for country around will know your name and marvel at your accomplishments. Suman, we aren't all killed and eaten. But yes, the man yeah, has a point. I'm if your parents don't want much. you after that, if your parents don't want you after that, I, I think you need new parents, lad. <laughs> uh, setting my tanker down, looking over to PK. You do know that it isn't always about your blood, kin. Well, that might be important sometimes when they actually care about you. But when you have piss poor relations with your blood kin, you make your own family. You find your own family. It's blood of choosing, not blood we were born with. Man's got a point, lad. Well, I don't think I'm going to kill this thing alone, so we will all share in the glory, right, brothers? As someone who's looked well, at the stats of all the stuff, you're definitely not killing that one alone. No, you can't do it. <laughs> not in the playtest. Oi. Oi. Don't. Don't matter. Vorpal fists are required. That <laughs> Sharpen <only>. your fists. <laughs> if we kill it. I don't want to be known for it. Hey, you're welcome to have all the prestige you want, lad. Me, person the, me personally, I have no saying. interest. Yeah, I have no interest in, no, in, in being known for any of that. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I do want glory, but not for that reason. I believe it will work to help each other out. Aye. On that note, maybe we should uh, at some point get started finding something that, to uh, start in on this, right? I think the first step might be finding some baby killers and, you know, setting the balance. Aye. These ways, in my experience, degenerates, druid or otherwise, are usually a little easier to deal with than, you know, one of the Tain. <laughs> you know, as, as for as much crap as I'm going to give you for not blanking, I do respect you for your choice. Back two years ago, my friend, we would have had many a night wondering who would win. But... Oaths are oaths. Yes. Not there. Are and uh, looking down to I the... Will, I will take a sip, but that's it. That's how it starts. <laughs> yeah, down yeah. to the goblin. Yeah. yeah. Never actually traveled with a goblin before, but uh, this one can drink. Very respectable. I'm still not entirely sure what a goblin is. He looks like... He's like one of those uh, ha halfling you said last time, but he's got big. Oh, big don't ears. say that in public. You'll piss people off. Oh, yeah. As you say that, you kind of just see the dwarf from before, just kind of like look up at you all, just kind of shake his head a bit, like. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had a common ancestor. I don't know. One of them's got a big feet. One of them's no, got big ears. No, hush, hush! You'll try to you get like you get the halfling mob like after us. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to say you, you don't want to get the we are you don't to kill. you get the kneecappers after us okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that was for taking hero point take oh a hero point, <laughs> a hero uh, point for this oh and henceforth all of my settings will have a halfling mob the kneecappers <laughs> But yes, there's one. Uh, I'll just look over at the barkeep, make whatever the appropriate sign to Torag is, and just mouth the words, Torag, have mercy. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 
clapping the goblin on the back though. We need to get this one a proper beard though. Can they can they grow beards? One of these things. No, but we'll try. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> good, I have good, heard good. of magic of such, so we'll find it. We'll give him a beard. There was a first level paladin spell back in the day called Iron Beard. It existed. I'm just saying. I worked as an investigator of sorts, and a druid stopped by and randomly mauled one man. I went there, and there had been a bear mauling and signs of a druid, and I was told that his cabal of druids worked on this island. So I'm trying to get rid of them before they torment anyone else. Well, it sounds to me like... Are you two from the same place? Pointing at Bren and then Elu. We may have a common enemy. Did the creature that did this change form? To a bear specifically. From a human? As far as I can tell. Well, yeah. Um, I actually still have that little piece of cloth that had, like, the symbol that was, like, left in the place. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like to pull that out and show it to Bren. Uh, yep. Bren. It is the three sort of, um, uh... It's the same three talon marks? Yeah, except right. this one... Three claw marks? Yeah, except this one is done in blood. I've seen that before. On the doorposts of my kin. Little one of common cause. Plays harmonica to add emotional tension. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta look up and one I, name. I, suppose, back, I need you to roll me that. Uh, yeah. I suppose DK okay. will add the drums. Breaks out the bongos. Uh, I figure he meant his chest. That works too. Just has a pair of bongos strapped to his stomach. Goes ham. Best oh, yeah. ever. That's pretty nice. I need to. I know lore kicks up automatically, but I don't know if lore kicks up at second or third. So I gotta check that real quick. I mean, I would assume third, just because that's when normally. Lore. I'm definitely making a lore check though. Do -do 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 -do. I'm, just, I'm gonna assume I'm still trained and not expert. Here is a lore, the green faith, to identify that symbol. Thanks, scholar background. So, all told, that's a 10. Nope. Nothing comes to mind. Okay. Mm, I'll try knowledge nature. That is also a 10. Nope. Damn. It's cloth. Can... <laughs> no, he's talking about the symbol specifically. Yeah. Do I not have knowledge religion on my sheet? Um, if you do, I will roll it for you if that is what you wish. Yes. Uh, knowledge, lore, warfare, uh, religion you are untrained in. Okay, never mind. So Do I have a uh, proficiency in anything that would probably make a uh, difference here? Um, oh wait, you are trained in nature. What the, what was I looking, okay, hold on. Oh, I thought you, I thought you said religion, sorry. Uh, but yeah, nature, I'm, I am, I am done in. You rolled a 16 in total. The only thing that you kind of notice is the fact that it's three claws. Mm -hmm. And, like, they're very even, very straight. Something with a higher level of intelligence in the form of an animal would make this sort of symbol. Because, like, otherwise you would probably expect to see sort of, like, you know, indicators of the thir fourth and fifth index. Because most things have five indexes, kind of. Sure. Here's a religion check. Plus one. Yeah. So, ugh, never mind. Boo. That's okay, all I have. Nothing comes to mind. Mm, so the last check Passing, I can think, the last um, check I can think of is a survival check, as if it's tracks. That's a twenty-one. Yeah. Uh, once again, too, too evenly made, too clean for it to be anything but a human in like the form of an animal, or very purposely trying to make that sort of thing. It's, it's just too clean. 
Okay. Yeah, my res my response to actually my role would probably be, probably be passing that information on just like that. Mm. Be like, see, look at it here. If you notice each one of the claw marks, it's it's too perfect. This was intentional, very intentional. Animals do not do this. Well, my kind have been known from time to time to adopt other forms, whether they need to traverse the ocean or fly across a chasm or, you know, maul each other to death. But I have another suspicion. I would like to... Here's a knowledge in nature. I want to extrapolate. All told, it's a 15. I'm thinking that might be a werebear. And I'm trying to determine if, like, this is a common, like, symbol used by particularly aggressive, like, lycanthros. No, it's not, it's not, nothing uh, like, comes to mind. Like, the, member, the person that did this could be a lycanthrope, but there's nothing to the symbol that would say, oh, yes, this is, like, a lycanthrope symbol. No, it's just, like, wait. Wasn't this. I specifically told that there was some evil order of druids on this? Yeah, island? you were. You yes. were told there was an. E there was, the man was a druid by the barkeep. They, you know, he sold that fancy yeah. wine to. Yeah, which I still have that fancy one. And I'm waiting for a good occasion and someone who appreciates the finer things to enjoy it with. <laughs> but, um, sorry, there was there are bursts of IRL sound, so I had to go mute for a bit. I hear you. That's fine. And I apologize. I thought I was muting I myself when this. I unmuted myself. <laughs> Classic. Whoops. Was I given the name of this conclave? No. I mean, you would think, though, uh, Bryn has said um, uh, the... Bloodleaf Covenant. You guys have heard, yeah, the Bloodleaf Covenant. Covenant. Okay. Live on the island and turn the trees red. No, the trees around there are run red with blood yeah. when you cut into them. Suppose I did a bit of a zooming. It's uh, fair enough, but from what you guys heard, there's not like anything they've directly done to the area. Well, if we wait for the night, my associate will return in the morning. Perhaps they will have learned something. Well, that seems to be our, our first yeah. task we're put to. I, I put my uh, my fist on the table and say, I'm in. Anything to kill a baby killer. Right. Overcorrecting the balance is oh, almost wait. as worse as having a state of unbalance in the first place. They'll be brought to task. So it sounds like we're together on this. I have some things I want to do at the market and at the local blacksmiths. Shall we say meet up? together at the uh, large, uh, I believe we learned it was uh, Abadar's uh, Aye. church here. Thought we did. We uh, should meet up there uh, in a few hours. Works for me. Give us, give each other a chance to roam about. Uh, I know there are people who I could be able to speak to more easily than, oh, say, uh, Bowser here. I, I'm i not too much of the social butterfly. Oh, I'm sure you do well oh. enough in your own environment. All things have their habitat. He's like an angry badger, except he oh, wants yeah. to kill his liver. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, a dwarf can drink an entire freaking keg and not feel anything. We're hardy folk. Or you have Kill damaged nerve endings, one or the other. Uh, perhaps I'll take Mirden with me. Talk to the woodsmen, the foresters as well. I agree. Sound reasonable to everyone? Sure. I'm gonna I would need to go to market myself. And maybe uh, find out if there's a fighters guild in town. Hmm. Or or the barracks, like something like that. 
seeing as I tried to be a soldier once. I'm just going to run out to the middle of town and start playing music and ask anyone who stops by. Is that normal? Do you do that here? Do you just walk out into town and play music and, and people will come and ask? This place is weird. Good. Be careful. Have you one. never seen a bard before? I've seen bards before, but they don't just go wandering out in the middle of town where perhaps there might be an evil cabal of people such as myself might tear them asunder. When you're particularly you small, have you, have you grown all the way? You're, where are your parents? There's Lilu. Elu. Someone take this man aside and teach you, him. Do you remember me helping put you back together? Vaguely. I'm still pretty sure this might possibly be the other world and we might all be very dead. But I remember. Suppose I also yeah, remember I... you swinging that giant bladed stick through things and killing him dead. Yeah, so... And it's still when... sticking up above me. When we were fighting... And you got hit. Did, did it not hurt? I hurt pretty bad. Most you don't hurt in dreams. You're not dreaming. Fair point, fair point, fair point. All right, fine. I'll go with Bren. We'll go shopping. We'll go talk to the local huntsman. Elu will go and dance in the street for money and cruise and things. Big hairy one's going to the barracks. What are you doing? Oh, I'm going to see if there's an arena around. I need to punch something. I've had enough there. Oh, yeah, God, so, I can't believe so. those words came out of my mouth. <laughs> so first I need to go to market. Then I need to go to the barracks. Then I'm going to have to go with him to go punch things, too. The first rule of Fight Club is every member of the party gets experience for Fight Club, even if only two of them participate. Uh, excuse me? Says who? <laughs> <laughs> Says the optimist. <laughs> well. I swear, it's like the voices in my head get stronger every day. Well, in that case, let break to go across town and uh, go from there. Seems good. This isn't the worst place to call it off, I suppose. We're a little early, but it's a good okay. stopping point. So if you're watching on Twitch, we're going to keep going. But if you're watching on YouTube, that's all we have for today. Thank you so much to everybody for hanging out and watching and my players for playing and my GM for being optimistic and letting me ride the experience train at the end of Piss Kicker's Fist to the next level because that'd be great and we'll see you next week say bye guys bye, bye.